All right, uh, we're back. We've got the complete lower end disassembled. So let's go ahead and take a look from over here. So the whole thing is disassembled. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some of that. So I'm still here hanging out. Someone give me five. Five, bud. No. No, nothing, nothing. He hates it in here. Okay, let me go ahead and put this on my head and uh, let's walk you through it. So this is the lower end case. Um, the reason why we have the lowering case out, let me go get the pistons over here. There's a bunch of other things in this garage. These are the pistons. So the reason why uh, we took the lower end apart, there aren't a lot of videos where uh, the actual case is taken out to, to nothing. And uh, one of the reasons why that is is because these motorcycles are you know, in relatively good shape. They don't really need to be taken apart if you don't have to. You certainly don't need to take the transmission apart if you don't have to. And uh, I mean, when, when you go through the book, it's like, look at the gears, see if they're worn. If not, just throw them back into the motorcycle. But the reason why we took this apart is because what had happened was, and hopefully you can see this, is the uh, piston, one of the pistons was blown out and um, you can see the wear on the inside of this one. And little itty bitty pieces of piston were all over the inside of the engine. It didn't do any real damage, it didn't, you know, scoff up the cylinder that it blew up in or anything like that. It was just annoying and it was all over the place and I was afraid that it was going to start getting into gears and stuff like that. Um, I don't think the person used it much after that obviously because they didn't get it repaired. So um, instead of throwing it all back together and running it and having oil with little chips in it uh, running through the engine, what I thought, of course, take it apart. While you're in here, you have to do some inspection. One of the things that you do is you may or may not change the uh, bearings on the crankshaft. So you have, of course, the case, and then there's a soft piece of metal that's a bearing, and uh, those are the crankshaft collar bearings, I think they're called, and they go between that and the crankshaft collars, which are right here, and there's five of them in a four-cylinder Honda motorcycle. So you have to buy two of them, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to match them up. I'm gonna show you here, hopefully you can see it. Right here it says A, 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 and then there's another A over here, and it's kind of um, etched into the inside of the crankshaft. So that's the first piece of data that you would need. The second piece is gonna be on the bottom of the crank, or I'm sorry, the top of the crank case. It's gonna say B, 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 B. It looks like three, or four threes and a B. Um, there are no numeric characters in the book when it goes into instruction. So I assume they were bees. They look close enough like bees. And if you go over to the book, this isn't the best book. There's actually a better one. I'll put a link on where you can get it for free. You're gonna go to, it looks like we passed it. So you're gonna go to this page and you're gonna find the crankcase. And the one that we had was an A. And then you're gonna find the crankshaft journal which was in this case a B, and what you're gonna do, oh, I'm sorry, I got that, I got that, uh, I got that mixed up. The crankcase was a B and the crankshaft journal was an A, which is a green bearing, which was this one right over here. So with the green bearing, you have to buy a particular number, and the parts fiche will tell you which one it is. But there are four different types of bearings. I think they're like black, brown, yellow, and green. You have to find the proper one uh, and do the install. You have to do an inspection of the thickness to see how worn it is. Um, the book takes you through that pretty easily. There's also a guy named Hack a Week um, on YouTube who also does a really, really good job of taking you through it as well. Um, so I don't think I have to. So that's kind of like the background. A couple of things are already installed. The cam chain or the primary chain tensioner is already installed. Um, there's a bearing that's already installed here, one of the transmission bearings. It's a real pain in the ass to take it out, so once it's installed, you don't really want to touch it because what you have to do to take it out is um, you need a slide hammer and you need a bearing puller, and it's just uh, a real pain in the ass. Um, I think there's something else that's installed. Oh yeah, the bearings, of course, um, are installed already as well. And once they're installed, you don't want to mess with them because you're going to scratch them or hurt them or do something to them, and then they're going to wear at an irregular rate. So the best thing to do is to leave them alone. And this kind of green slime all over the place on all of the um, kind of half circles here where a bearing might be placed or a journal might be placed is just assembly lube, and uh, that kind of preps it and gets it ready. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put together, we're going to put in the camshaft. 
And one of the really good ways to do that is just by lifting up the chain and dropping it in here. Hopefully you can see that. I'll try to get my head down. And that's kind of it. And you can also replace these bearings as well, the ones that go inside of the, um, inside of the uh, piston rods or the connecting rods. And they're actually easy enough to find. You find them in the same place that you would get the bearings. I got them on, at Partzilla. It's about $100 worth of bearings and it's definitely worth the replacement. And those bearings are easy to find, except the problem is these bolts right here are like just a humongous pain in the ass to find. And uh, because of that, I just didn't replace them. Also, the bearings on, on the journals were within spec, so I figured that they would be okay. The motorcycles have about, got about 50,000 miles in it. It's probably good for another 50,000 miles more, which may be more than it ever gets driven. Um, so I just figured that I wouldn't touch it. And if I love the motorcycle and I drive it all the time, I'll take the engine out again, and I'll, and I'll do a change on these, uh, on these bolts here. Okay, um, that being the case, I think we've finished this piece. Um, the, the only thing that's important here is, I've just moved the chains on the outside. There are two primary chains, these two. Um, you can actually measure based on putting a caliper in the bottom and measuring how tight the tensioner is, whether these are in spec. I think the distance is like 60 millimeters or 70 millimeters. It is in spec, it's okay. And then um, also we've got a, a cam chain here, which is gonna go up like this through the engine, and then these are gonna go back here like this, and this is gonna actually spin the um, transmission and also end up spinning the, the main drive, and then this spins the cam. So we're gonna go through all that, but um, I think for right now that's it. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put together uh, the main drive, which is this thing right here. I've been calling it the main drive. I don't know what, what it's called exactly. Uh, it's a sprocket. It runs a spring back here that um, connects to the rear wheel. And then we're also gonna uh, install the Kickstarter and hopefully I get that right the first time because it's actually a pretty difficult install. Okay? All right.